How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern, Saturday mornings with Jim Valley, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern, Sundays with Andrew Zarian, and it is Wednesday on this show. we got a lot to talk about here today. Tonight, AW Dynamite, and we've got more segments announced for the show. And I believe there are 1,900 tickets. So we've sold a few hundred tickets since they announced the John Moxley-Jeff Hardy match. But it is the U, uh, UNO Lakefront Arena, New Orleans. We'll talk about all the matches on the show. And uh, and also last night's NXT. We've got a pay-per-view, a PLE coming up on Sunday. And the main event, Ilya Dragunov, Trick Williams for the NXT title. And the storyline is that, well, Trick has to work twice because it is also Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams versus Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin in the finals of the Dusty Tag Team Classic. So a lot to talk about from that show. We'll do the highlights of NXT as well. And then other news. Okada is now a free agent. He's still got a few more matches he's going to do for New Japan Pro Wrestling, but he is a free agent, and he's issued a statement about that. And we can talk more about where he may or may not be going. We got Raw ratings for Monday night, the Raw after the Royal Rumble. We've got notes on what MJF has been up to, as well as Sonya Deville. They've both been up to the same thing, but not together. We'll tell you about that here today. And, of course, whatever is on your mind. If you'd like to text us, we'll do text messages today, 425 780 7566. That is 425 780 7566. F4WOnline at gmail.com is the email. I'm F4WOnline on threads, Instagram, and Cameo. At Brian Alvarez on Twitter, slash X. And let's talk about it after the break. Observer Live. Welcome to the special tour of Figure Four Weekly Headquarters, as promised. Today I will be accompanied by my assistant Vincenzo, so let's get moving. Hey, don't worry about it. Today's a special day, I'll drive. Today's going to be a good day, so let's not F anything up, okay? Now, I'd like to tell everybody, I just want to give a short speech on the way to uh, the compound here today, and that is that we are going through very tough economic times right now. Right, Vince? It's a time of uh, stock market crashing, the yen is devalued, a time of woe and want. and. Many of you watching this right now, for all I know, are unemployed. But the good thing is, and I always like to look on the bright side, as Vince is well aware, the good news is that for every dark cloud, there is a silver lining. And the silver lining is that Figure Four Weekly is doing great. It's a huge success right now. Subscriptions are up, quality is down, Profit margins are skyrocketing. Things are going very well. So the one thing is that I don't want to make it seem like money is everything because money cannot buy happiness. But what it can buy is enormous houses. And that makes me happy. So we will be going to see my enormous house, the Figure Four Weekly Compound. And uh, 
That's where we're heading right now. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, BB, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Okada, now a free agent. New Japan contract expired at midnight, Japan Standard Time. He released a statement on X thanking fans for supporting New Japan. Or thank you for supporting New Japan Pro Wrestling 17 years. Thank you very much. I laughed, got angry, cried. It was great. I look forward to playing the remaining three games... As a free agent, he has he has three more dates for New Japan. Merchandise being removed from PWTs.com. Story is, this is related to him leaving New Japan as opposed to potentially going to WWE. They did remove the Jay White merch when he left New Japan as well. So we will see if there is anything to read into that or not. Of course, if he's going to WWE, he will have no PWT's merchandise. Dave wrote in The Observer, the last word, and this, of course, was on Friday. He had not made up his mind. People here range from hopeful to I perceive it's confident he will be coming. If he was to sign with AEW, likely arrival date would be around the Greensboro show. His final New Japan date, February 24th. WWE, they could... Uh, See him holding off until WrestleMania. Tony Khan has been especially enthusiastic about 2024 between new signings and returns over the next few months. MJF, Adam Cole, Kenny Omega, Bandito, Ray Phoenix, Pac, and Britt Baker. I can tell you as of uh, moments ago, it does not appear there is anything new on Okada from people that know him. So he is still... Deciding what it is that he wants to do. And quite frankly, it may it may be that today would be the first day he could even talk to WWE about any of this. Because, you know, WWE is not talking to somebody who is under contract officially. And, of course, AEW, you know, they can talk to people under New Japan contract because they have. They've signed people who are under New Japan contract. So I would presume in the next couple of days he'll probably have some discussions and then maybe we will know more about which way he is leaning. But as of right now, nothing new. That's the story on Okada. 36 years old. I would say make your money, but he's going to make his money either way. So <laughs> so's Barry Bloom. Man, what a year Barry Bloom has had, and he's doing the representation for Okada when it comes to these negotiations. And I'm sure WWE and Barry Bloom probably have a little bit of a feeling on what's going on right now when it comes to Okada. So I don't think they're going into that blind into into this time of the year, Okada negotiations. But where do you think he ends up? Because, man, again, there are, when you take your fandom out of it, as far as what place you would prefer him to go, I mean, there are so many advantages both ways for him. And, again, this is a big move coming over here to the States. Where do you think this ultimately ends up? I don't know. We're going to see who pays him what or who offers to pay him what. I don't know if that matters, though. Do you think that matters at the end of the day? Yes, it does. It does. Yeah, well, wait, hold on now. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. No, are you talking about top dollar? Obviously, money matters, that's for sure. But does the the top of the dollar scale scale matter as much as maybe some of the again i would figure AEW could offer more things to him you know again personally than than maybe could be offered through TKO but go ahead well he wants to work wrestlemania i know he stated that so that obviously would not happen if he went to AEW no. AEW he'd have probably a much easier schedule i don't know what kind of schedule he wants i don't know what either side is going to pay him I don't know what he wants in terms of anything, really. I mean, he's going 
He's going because he can make significantly more money in America. That's the number one reason that he's doing this. He obviously made a lot per New Japan standards, but, you know, he learned what the top stars are making here in this country. And not just the top stars in AEW, but the top stars in WWE as well. And he's going to be making probably multiples of what he made in Japan. And I think that that's the main reason. And obviously, then he'll see what he wants. I mean, friends with Nakamura. He's been friends with Nakamura forever. He's been friends with the Elite forever. He's been friends with with Kenny Omega and and Will Ospreay. And, I mean, we'll see. You acquire friends in the wrestling business. Yeah, he's got a lot of friends in both places. And he's also 36. And I don't know, you know... Obviously, there was no AEW before Nakamura came to America, but, you know, Nakamura was pretty much thrashed, and he preferred to go to a place where he was not going to be required to have five-star matches. He should just go in there and have good matches and surf and be happy. See, go to work. That's it. And he's close with Okada. I don't know what they've talked about. I don't know what Okada wants to do. So I don't. I do not know. I do not have a... I do not have a... Like a... No, there's no crystal ball. There's no magic eight ball where you can figure out what he's going to do. But if it comes down to who can give you the highest ceiling and who can give you WrestleMania, I mean, that's why a lot of wrestlers over the years, whether they, they talk, they're, they're looked upon as Jim Crockett guys or Bill Watts guys or this person or that person, there are so many people that just always wanted to go to WWF, WWE, because that's what they considered the pinnacle. And if uh, in Okada's mind, WWE is the pinnacle, then, you know, being on a WrestleMania and all that sort of stuff, you know, that's going to take precedence probably over anything else. But again, we'll see. We'll see what his motivations are and what he's thinking. Because again, you know, what's I, I hope, I do hope that there is some, I, I would love to hear an interview. I would love to hear something as far as his motivations for coming over and really, again, I, I again, I, very few guys write books. I, I, you know, and I, maybe a ton of guys in Japan do. I, I know Takata has, and, and some other people have. But I would love to to see this thing kind of play out in, in documentary form or in the written word, as far as this whole process for him at this point in his career, because it is a fascinating one, and it is one that. I mean, it's never happened before. We never have had somebody who's been the number one star in all of Japanese wrestling say, hey, I'm out, and I'm going over to the States, and I'm going to try to see what I can do there. So this whole thing is really fascinating on a lot of different levels to me. Rampage is tonight, and they are currently at 1,987 tickets. They sold about 189 since they announced John Moxley, Jeff Hardy. And they are doing $20 tickets. So uh, trying to get some people into that building. It's set up for 2098 according to WrestleTix, although the actual building sells significantly more than that. But it's a Dynamite Rampage taping tonight. And what we have got for the show thus far is Moxley and Jeff Hardy. We've got... But what a match, by the way. John Moxley and Jeff Hardy... Mm. You know, sometimes you go, close your eyes and imagine the match, and it's going to be exactly as you expect. I can't even close my eyes and imagine this match. A sloppy mess. Moxie just beats him up the entire time, and Jeff falls on him repeatedly mm. and gets choked out. I think that's what's going to happen. <laughs> that's my guess. Swerve Strickland uh, versus whoever Hangman chooses. He teased the whole effing show, but they have not announced Rob Van Dam, but I presume that's who it's going to be. Hangman Page, Toa Leona, Dealer's Choice Match, Deanna Parazzo and Taya Valkyrie, and Chris Jericho versus Kyle Fletcher. So that is the lineup for tonight. Not a big marquee lineup, that's for sure, for tonight's Dynamite. We've got uh, a couple of other notes here. The post-Royal Rumble edition of Raw. 1.91 million viewers, 0.61 in 18 to 49 the opening segment where cm punk came out in his cast and did his promo and announced he's not going to be at wrestlemania did uh 
2.01 million viewers. And the Cody Rhodes, Seth Rollins segment beat it in the second hour. 2.2 million viewers and a .73 in 18 to 49 for Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins during their segment. That is a gigantic number. Was that, and this is probably was. We'll was ask this the... question after the break. Hold on. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Getting to, um, I want to go ahead and shift into Continental Classic because you just mentioned it. Uh, a really, really great tournament that AEW has put together with top-notch competitors. I mean, you got to go in there with Andrade, with Brian Danielson. Loved uh, seeing you guys go to the time limit draw. That was awesome. Uh, Daniel Garcia, young guy in this who's been killing it. Eddie Kingston, Brody King. Uh, all of these people that you've got to mix it in with. What was your impression when you first heard of the Continental Classic that this was going to be happening? And how did you feel getting to take part in the first one and in the tournament of this caliber? Um, I was very excited, you know. Um, <laughs> right before I uh, joined AEW, uh, I was I was extremely close. Like, <laughs> probably a couple of days away uh, before doing the G1 for New Japan. And I always want to do the G1. And I still own one, I feel like. So um, to do the Continental Classic, um, I was super excited. And it also, to me, um, I feel like I'm at my best when I get into a routine, so to speak. And with the Continental Classic, it's like, you know, you wrestle every week. And like, then again, like looking back, I was like, I pretty much wrestled every week multiple times. Uh, <laughs> so uh, but to me, to me, it's always like, okay, every cool. And then I looked at the, both groups and uh, like all the talent announced, which is awesome because I was like, yeah, yeah, there's like, there's not one person that I wouldn't want to be in the ring with. And then um, I saw the the brackets or whatever. And I, you know, the blue group and I'm like, this is like, every single competitor is like top level. Every single competitor, it's going to be fun and a big challenge and every match is going to be different. Right. So um, I think, I mean, the gold group was, fun to watch as well, but I feel like the blue group just had like so many different styles and competitors in it. And it was so much fun, not just for, for me, I feel like my, you know, fellow competitors as well. And for the, the viewers, because you kind of knew what matches you were getting. I mean, like you knew what the matches were like, right. When you look at it through like, Oh my God, I'm going to get all those matches, but you didn't really know quite when, you know? So it's like, it's, it's still that like cool and then it gets announced and it's cool and you can look forward to it. Um, and then of course it all came down to the last day, which was a lot of fun. I feel like for, for everybody watching and it's not quite over yet. So it's, you know, it's, it's been a very good thing, uh, for AW and, and the fans. And I just brought it down to, to me, what wrestling is because it's fun, it's sports, it's storytelling. And, um, you know, I, You've seen all the guys do like the, the interviews and the promos and then like the matches and it's just everybody put their heart and soul into it and you can tell. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. What was your question about that show? Well, I already answered it during the break, but I'll put it out there for everybody. I was curious as to if that was the 9 o'clock hour that they had that segment in, and it yes. was the 9 o'clock hour they had that segment. So. Yep, 0. 0.73, 18 to 49. First hour, 2.1 million viewers. Second hour, 1.95. Third hour, 1.69. So no football. Numbers are back to being big again. So there is that. MJF doing acting work as well as Sonya Deville. She's out with a torn ACL. He's just on the shelf. He's got some injuries, but I'm sure he'll be back at some point. He's going to appear in the comedy The Floaters by Jackie Tone of Glow. That's what it says here. Deadline reported on Wednesday. 
Project recently wrapped filming in New York. Seth Green. Former, it says here, one-time Raw guest host. Oh, Brian's, that's Seth Green. Brian's eyes went right to the only confused. name. There's one of two names he could know out of all of these people in this movie. You want me to read all these? MJF. You don't Steve know any Gutenberg of them. Steve from Three that's Men and a Baby? That's the second one he oh, was going to know. Oh, now here we go. Yeah, you anything else? You don't know any of these other folks. You're an idiot. No, you don't. We don't Who, know. Who's Rachel Israel, Brian? We don't know what his role is. <laughs> but I do know that he was Lance Von Erich in that, uh, which apparently got no Oscar nominations whatsoever. Wait. <laughs> Who was Lance Von Not Eric? Lance Von Eric. MJF? MJF was Lance Von Eric. You're an idiot. You, were... you don't know anything. I thought, oh, oh, I'm an idiot. I thought you were talking yeah. about the cast to you this You asked, movie. who is Lance Von Eric? Well, besides Lance Von Eric. Okay, dude. All right. Who got any more? T- tell, them, tell us about the movie. I don't know anything about it. No one does. It's all a secret. <laughs> but Sonya Deville, page. hey, she's doing a movie too. Jesus. DNA Secrets. Filming in Clearwater, Florida. DNA Secrets, it's called. Produced by David Yates. Huh? Who's that, Mike? Who gives a Dolphin crap, Tale Brian? and Dolphin Tale 2. How do you not know that? What are we doing here? It told the Tampa Bay Times right re- recently that the movie's plot centers on an antique store owner who gives a relative's DNA testing kits as a gift. But the store owner's family members begin turning up murdered. She edges closer to the truth, only to discover that she herself is at the heart of a mystery that has put her entire family in danger. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. What do you think about that? Well, go back and tell us what The Floaters is about, then. No one knows. It's on the front page of the site! Uplifting comedy. Beautifully directed by Rachel Israel. Celebrates a Jewish community which the world needs more of right now, said the producers. Yes. <laughs> Are you all right over there? Uh, I don't know if it's a lifetime movie. I doubt it. It's not a lifetime movie. <laughs> That's what somebody asked right here. I think he's it's asking a- about DNA <laughs> secrets. That sounds kind of like a lifetime movie right there. Oh, man, I hope Lyra Valkyrie is in this if this is a lifetime movie. She would be perfect for one of those movies. Did you guys watch that NXT show last night? I did. You know the most amazing thing is to me about that NXT show it is that over the last 18 months close to two years the WWE demos have have uh, have grown younger we've got more 18 to 34 we've got more 18 to 49 and we have less 50 plus and granted you also were talking about a show that is taped at the performance center with the same locals that come every time And I don't know what their demos are, but I'm thinking they must be a little bit younger. Because last night we had a Chase U video package (laughs) in memoriam, Chase U. And they played, they played Tell Me a Lie, (laughs) which was the song that they used when Shawn Michaels collapsed after that match with Owen Hart and had to vacate the intercontinental title with tears in his eyes and they had just the most preposterously awesome goodbye Shawn Michaels video we hope to see you again tell me a lie and man they brought it back for this chase you segment and you know as as the video appears on the screen like you can still hear like the crowd and I, I had heard that they did this okay so I'm waiting and as soon as they hit that music, nothing. Nothing. I thought for sure, like, the place would pop or they would laugh or whatever. It was like nobody had any idea what Tell Me a Lie was. I was aghast. 30 years at ago. At how freaking old I am. 30 God. years, yeah. I like to yeah. think some of the audience laughed along with me, but... God, these people here just had no idea. They had no idea about Tell Me a Lie. Even Robert Stone's kids didn't know about this. <laughs> I was just aghast. Look at everything that took place during that show. Look at how they rely in general on pre-taped vignettes on personalities getting together in the kitchen area and talking about stuff. Like, this is 
as G-rated of a Lucha Underground show. I mean, it, it slowly has morphed into that, and I don't know if enough people talk about that. And I do wonder, by the time this show ends up on CW... Is it really going to be, I mean, right now? I think they're it, preparing them for CW right now with some of these skits we're watching. I, I, oh, and I wonder, God. it's like wrestling is going to be truly the background. The in-ring stuff, in a lot of ways, is probably really going to be the background unless you have a fire match. And I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing, considering how many of these people are in creative they are there because they are developing they are nil folks they don't have a lot of experience so i wonder this weird hybrid show if it starts tilting a little bit more towards the lucha underground realm than it does a wrestling show that nah, depends some weeks some some weeks they have more of this stuff some weeks well, they have more Ilya wrestling and carmelo you give them you give them 15 20 minutes yeah but, but their segments are fine i'm talking like god these lyra valkyra segments oh my god Oh my lord! And then the Joe beauty Gacy? queen, the good Joe Gacy thing is the stupidest thing on any show right now. <laughs> I just hate it. Hey, at least Ariana. I mean, yes, the beauty queen. At least you know she is such a over the top cartoon. I mean, in some ways, it's like uh, uh, the the girl with Chase Thea with Chase U. It's like I can tolerate that a lot more than some of these. Some of these other folks with underdeveloped characters or those who who don't have a real handle on them that are trying their best out there. See, the thing with this show is, like, for younger viewers, it's just, like, this weird thing. But, like, if you're older, it's just a total 90s show. It's a total 90s show. It's 90s, you know, teen dramas. It's 90s pro wrestling. Yes. It's Sean doing all of his 90s gimmicks. They Maybe that's why back- I like this show so much. They went back into the 80s. I mean, they went back and they're actually breaking out. Like, everything is down and out. And it's the Bikini Car Wash Company. Well, I do got to talk about that. We're going to do a calendar shoot. Okay. (laughs) So we talked about how is JC raising money for Chase U? What are they going to do? And so the obvious, you know, it is 2024. So we figured, well, she's getting all these women starting OnlyFans accounts. And they're going to make all this money and then, you know, pay off the debts of Chase U. Well... I, I I neglected to consider that Shawn Michaels is the guy putting the show together, and so instead, JC comes out and she announces, "We have done the Chase the Women of Chase U calendar." <laughs> what? what? Well, was Sports and Illustrated so going? Down. All Somebody's of the women came out on the ramp, and they announced that they have a. And this is this is actually the funniest part. It's not just a storyline. On Sunday at the PLE, at the merch booth, you can buy a Women of Chase U (laughs) calendar. A calendar. That is how they are raising money. And it's just like, listen, I know the people writing this show are old, but like, you're telling me that JC Jane, I'm supposed to believe that, how old is JC Jane? How old is she? Let's uh, find 25? out here. She may know. not even have a Wikipedia for all I know. <laughs> JC Jane. Let's see here. She's 27. There you go. She was born She was born in 1996. <laughs> <laughs> she was born after Tell Me a Lie. After that whole Shawn Michaels angle. I'm supposed to believe that in storyline, she had to think of a way to raise money using all of the ladies of Chase U. And her idea was, let's make an analog calendar, a hard copy calendar. We'll print it out. We'll, we'll have it, you know, wrapped in, you know, plastic that you have to rip open. It'll have all the dates. I mean, theoretically, it has to be like a 2025 calendar, right? Because 2024 is always started. Don't you always sell calendars a year in advance? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. If you want want to nail a calendar to your wall in your house (laughs) with a hammer and a nail, boy, have I got a gift for you. You might only need a push pin. So I just died. And then (laughs) Andre Chase is just so happy. And man, we had Bodie Hayward in the uh, the video package. In the video, yeah, there's they, they, Bodie all over that thing. Yeah, front and center for Bodie. Man, just disappeared one day, never came back to school. <laughs> Crowd chanting, "What's the price, brother? Be ready to pay." 
dude, Chase U owes hundreds of thousands yeah. of dollars. <laughs> That's like when she first announced a calendar. I was like, and you know, at first I the storyline was they're just selling them locally around the area. I was like, how are you going to raise hundreds of thousands of dollars? You know how much the printing costs alone are going to be? you got to sell that calendar for like 60 bucks each. Then I hear they're selling it at live events. I was like, man, how about that? Anyway, text us, 425-780-7566. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Fish can swim this far up shore. Yeah. Shoulders ran like the wind, but he could find no peace. In the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Oh, my God. Look at this Twitch chat. I can't imagine what the YouTube chat is about. If what? What are they mad chat, about? I wasn't paying attention. They're not upset about anything. They're talking about feet pics. Oh, show stop. And Get out they of are. here, people. <laughs> they would always text me right when we come back on the air. <laughs> what, to show feet? <laughs> <laughs> no so you know the other thing we got the uh the ple coming up we'll go for your text messages here in a moment we're just going to talk about the main the main stuff from this show if you want the full review observer radio or the brian and Vinny show we'll talk about it for 45 minutes 40 minutes of which we'll be talking about lyra valkyra and her uh her acting here on this program we got Ilya Dragunov against Trick Williams for the NXT title. And also Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams versus Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin. 
So quick and dirty, the storyline is Truk Williams was attacked a while ago, and uh, and everyone thinks it's Carmelo. Carmelo's trying to convince him that it was actually Ilya Dragunov that attacked him. Ilya's claiming, well, I, I don't even know why I would have done that. Ilya was injured and unable to defend his title, but later came back and said, hey, you know what? If you want your championship match, I'll give it to you at the pay-per-view. And Trick was all happy and accepted, but of course this made Carmelo sad because Carmelo wants to win the Dusty Cup also at the pay-per-view. Dusty said, or uh, Carmelo says, clearly he did this on purpose. He wanted you double booked so you couldn't concentrate fully on either match. And uh, so at the end of the show, they had a big brawl, and Carmelo and Trick cleared the ring. And after clearing the ring, uh, Carmelo like wanted to celebrate with Trick, but Trick was busy staring down Elia. So now Carmelo thinks... He's not concentrating on our match. We're not going to win because he doesn't have his mind on the Dusty Cup. So I like what they're doing. It's a good storyline. My guess is they lose in the Dusty Cup and Trick wins the title. And then Carmelo totally snaps because he got nothing and Trick got the championship. Then we've got Lyra against Roxanne. I have not been blown away by this storyline. I presume that... uh, Either Roxanne wins or maybe Lyra turns heel with her buddy Tatum Paxley. I can't I can't tell which I'm I'm more done with. The Tatum Paxley Roxanne or the Tatum Paxley Lyra deal or this Joe Gacy thing. So we what do are the have odds, I'm sorry, what are the odds that Tatum turns on Lyra and it's actually Roxanne who they've been giving a little bit of a darker edge to and if you're looking at this from a developmental point of view, she has never worked heel before, at least certainly not on any significant level. So do you do something you like could that have her to turn. try to swerve? You could do that. Oba Femi defends against Dragon Lee for the North American title. And we've got uh, the family, Tony D, Stax, and Adriana Rizzo versus Lucian Price, Bronco Neiman, and Jada Parker. I'm trying to wrap my head around that one. And then we've got a no DQ match with Dijak and Joe Gacy. Why? Because they brawled all over the place on NXT. And then Dijak threw him off a thing into a, a dumpster. Off the roof. And then he is all angry and he's getting yelled at by Ava. who <laughs> sort of. Ava had two segments on this show. Okay, <laughs> One of them, she was much better than usual. The other yeah. one, she was significantly worse than usual. Well. So we got we got a big swing on this show. And so she's yelling at him about the dumpster thing. And she goes, are you trying to get suspended? You're, you're giving me no other option. And he goes, I got another option. How about we have a no DQ match on Sunday? And she goes, how will he be in any condition to perform on Sunday? And suddenly you hear, and she and they all look behind her, the dumpster. And Joe Gacy climbs out. He's all happy. He's got garbage in his mouth. He goes, I'm all ready for Sunday. Or no disqualifications, cool, I think is what he said. But uh, Okay, so you guys had a wild, crazy brawl that a guy got thrown off into the dumpster and then you no-sold it to make me want to see another brawl on Sunday? I hate, you know. How did it start? You're forgetting. You didn't tell the people. What's how Joe Gacy's it... real name? Oh, the, the backstage interrogation the segment? Down, yes. I don't have time for that today. <laughs> I'll, I'll be here for years. Oh, Joe man. Gacy. Joseph Ruby is his real name. I'm sure he's a nice guy. Son of Jack Ruby? He's a good worker. But God, he has never had a good gimmick ever in NXT. Not one single time. (laughs) Every single solitary gimmick Joe Gacy has ever had in this company has been terrible. So anyway, that's well, the lineup. Well, he went from one type of crazy man to another type of crazy man, so... You ever you look know. through at his various gimmicks throughout his wrestling career? His CZW stuff? His ring names have been Joe Gacy, Psycho Joe, Chainsaw, and my favorite, Xerox. <laughs> that's it. 
think that was what was that, that gimmick? Like you just copied everybody? <laughs> That'd be an, actually an awesome gimmick. I was gonna say, was that? I a might come gimmick? back for that, but there's nobody I'd want to copy unless they were like really terrible. <laughs> that was a that, that's a Chikara gimmick if I've ever heard one, except for the fact that it actually was Xerox, and I don't know if you can. Quack and Bush would have gotten sued over that one. I like that one. Oh, Xerox. No matter who he gets in the ring with, he just copies everything they do. All mirror spots the entire match. Now, let me ask you, though, which segment was it that Ava was so much better in as compared to the other one, which he was significantly worse in? The one I in, they were the both one, pretty poor. No, the one in front of the dumpster, she was absolutely atrocious in that segment. And then there was one at the beginning of the, the show. The one with Lexus and, uh, yeah. what was the other one? Yeah, that one. Oh, no. With Rich Holland? No. Yeah, she was much better in that segment. Oh, no. Yeah. Well. Well, let's go to the texts and the emails here. Uh, Brandon says, I don't get the reference, but I smiled because of the corniness of the video package. Brandon, one of our longtime loyal listeners, has not, he has no idea what Tell Me a Lie is. I'm so ancient ancient oh man i just don't know how could you not know tell me a lie i don't blame myself i blame wwe this is michael here michael <laughs> booble never heard of it and i'm in the music business well you're in the wrong business then dude who in the music business hasn't heard of tell me a lie exactly all right, let's see what else we got here. What's his name? Guy's name Jack Johnson? Jim Johnson? Yeah. Legend. Hey, you know, I want to bring this up. That Jim Johnson guy? Uh-huh. Man, he was good at his job. He was. And, uh, you know, this, this, these new WWE themes, you know, there are a few that are all right, but in general it's just like, all right, well, you got some theme, you got some metal, you got some whatever. They're all interchangeable. Like, the only reason they're not interchangeable is because they're associated with a certain person for a, a long period of time. But it ain't nothing like it used to be. And I realize that I seem, like, old. But, you know, someone mentioned to me, one of the things with the Royal Rumble this year is, like, every now and then they hit music and the crowd wasn't even sure who it was at first. Because these mute, these songs, they're, they're all the same. You know, unless they start with, like, something, you know, boom or whatever. Whereas back in the day, it's like, man, they hit that Bushwhacker theme, and it wasn't JYD coming out. You know what I mean? They hit yeah. those themes, and they, they like the themes matched Diesel's the horn. character, yeah. and you know they kept them for a long time, and they were all different. And you know the Rumble, it's like, whose music is this? Who is this? And then you know they come out, and that's me, by the way. I'm not even talking about the people that, you know, they just got into WWE and they bought Rumble tickets or whatever. Because I did hear from people that, you know, they said that, you know, I sat around people and they just, they were like, who's that guy? So, you know, we there are newer fans that are going to these shows. I mean, when you have 50,000 people in a building, they're not all hardcores, okay? They're all hardcores when you have 1,800 people in Well, the look building. where the entire business fell to a couple of years ago when we kept saying it couldn't get any worse, and it just kept getting worse all the way around. So, yeah, there are actually people that have cut their teeth mostly on WWE for the first time. They're becoming wrestling fans for the first time, basically post-Cena. I mean, forget about just the fact that we're ancient, but the fact that these guys are now, and, and girls and guys, like, they're not even recognizing John Cena because they came after all that. I think most everybody's recognizing old John Cena. That might have been a bad No, example. but I mean, as far as, like, they, these kids, it's like, they like Jay and Jimmy and Roman and Cody, and, like, that's that's what they're about. This is who they're coming up with, Rhea and Bianca and folks like that, whereas John Cena is old. Wow. He's younger than I am. And you. When did John Cena Not debut? that old. When did he debut? 2002. Yeah. It's been, Here's the thing. It's been a little while. We, we've talked about it. Like, you know, legends as far as legends coming back. You know, there was another time period where Randy Orton would be coming back as a legend at this WrestleMania, but he's still there, still grinding away and all that. So, again, that age group, they're they're rapidly, again, they're they're performing to a high level and no complaints about me and they, or any of that stuff but like again this is this is not the future as far as wants to know which titles cody going after at mania romans obviously obviously they're just trying to bide the time to pop a rating 
This person says, you know who laughed at Tell Me a Lie, Brian? You and the guy who put the package together. Oh, stop. Yeah. Come well. on. Get out of here. Yeah. Although I would bet that 99% of the people involved in Chase U have no idea about that song. No. Who look, Does Chase know about that? Okay, Andre Chase, bravado brother, he probably knows about that song. Certainly Sean does back there. But honestly, who else would? If Jeremy Borash, like, again, you got to be of a certain age. Otherwise, again, this is why nobody, look, they don't push the network. That's why I fear the network could actually go away at some point with all the archives because people aren't going back to watch that stuff. And again, you're expecting kids who have no attention span, who are not looking to the pa- into the past for anything. You're expecting them to go back 30 years and know some of this stuff, and maybe they should. Maybe they should know about their history. We talk about this in sports all the time with guys like Shouldn't the, the, the best center fielder in baseball or running back in football, shouldn't those young guys know about the past and about their, their history? Maybe they should, but a lot of them just flat don't. Bert says, you know, in Japan, stardom calendars and photo books sell like hotcakes. Maybe Chase U will sell internationally. Oh, boy, cheesecake books from NXT. <laughs> Listen, oh, man. It's, it, it's also there's a cultural aspect of this. When, yeah. Raise your hand if you have bought a Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue in the last 25 years. Anyone? Anybody? No. Not happening. No. Oh, this person says, I was born in 1997. I barely know about Tell Me a Lie from Cardona and Meyer's action figure podcast, but I could not tell you what or where it came from. (laughs) Do we need to go back and review that on Tuesday? That whole whole situation? You may want to. While you're at it, boot up, boot up the Lex Express, too. Fill, fill up the uh, tank on that one and drive it around. Is debuting Okada versus Seth at Mania viable? Oh, well, Does the office viable. trust the WWE audience to be informed enough to debut Okada at such a high level? Guys, listen. Listen. If you're doing that, debut him against Gunther. Come on. Bro, if you think this audience wouldn't know Okada... Stop. Actually, that WrestleMania audience would know Okada better than almost their any other exactly. audience they go to in like Cedar Rapids or whatever. Their random SmackDown show new trick. Who has never been on a main roster show ever. The hardest He's of on course NXT, for a weekend. which everybody tells me nobody watches. <laughs> everybody knew trick there. So yes, they would know Okada, but I don't think it's Okada and Seth at Mania. As Dave noted, if he debuted it probably would be at WrestleMania. And he would get a massive reaction given the audience that travels for Mania. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Um, well, I was super excited. Like, um, you know, when I, when I joined the AEW and it was the Blackpool Combat Club, I was like, oh, yeah, it just, like, people ask me, how do you feel? I'm like, I feel like it's just right. Like, it just, yeah, yeah. I get up another day and it's, like I've always been part of it, you know, and 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 uh, with Brian again, like I've known him for almost twenty plus years now, uh, all over the world. Like you said, we've been in the ring, um, all over the world, and like just also just hung out and traveled together for so long um, that it's been so much fun, um, you know, just being around him a lot. And uh, you know, I always mentioned the, the BCC group chat because it seems to get people jealous that they <laughs> that they're not in it. Um, uh, there's also a, a, a BCC book club, I think, that just got founded. So yeah. Um, Wait, didn't that just start? I mean, we just we just started our first book that we were all reading together. So yeah, I think that's going to be a thing as, as well. Because I know Brian said that he reads three books at the same time. So is he making you guys do this, or was this uh, like a joint thing? No. So I feel like uh, so so Brian has been reading for for a long time. And he reads a lot of books. Uh, I think he reads like at least one a week or something like that, which is incredible. Um, I just started reading a lot more this year. And I know uh, Mox reads quite a bit as well. So we were just kind of like, oh, what if we just kind of do a book club thing? We just all read like a similar, like the same book and then talk about it. And we were like, oh, sure, yeah, why not? So uh, we're forcing Yuda to read as well. Um, no, <laughs> I mean, like Yuda was always reading, but you know, we're just um, now doing this kind of thing. So, so it, it, that just kind of sums it up how much fun it is it's been with with Brian and then uh, to to your second part of the of the question um you know if 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 this is his last 
uh, year full time wrestling. I'm extremely happy to have had that match with him. Um, because we were kind of talking, it was like the last couple of matches we had were in front of uh, nobody or screens in the Thunderdome era. And then before that, it was like tag matches and this and that. But like singles wise, I think it was like a gauntlet match years ago, like that was in 14 or 15 or something like that when I was still with um, Zeb and Swagger. And then obviously, you know, before that Ring of Honor. So it's been actually been quite a while. And um, I mean, I was extremely happy that I was able to wrestle him for that long in front of an audience on TV and uh, just go in there and have fun. And, uh, you know, like if he can do it again, like uh, I would obviously love to. But if not, I feel like, you know, if Brian's kind of going, you know, if this is his last year, he's just going down the list of fun stuff that he wants to do. And I was glad to have been part of it. Not so glad about that draw since he cost me the tournament, but you know, you win some, you lose some. On the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper Vivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. And yes, uh, Okada appearing at WrestleMania, he would get a massive pop. That's that's an audience that would absolutely 100% know him. So, Stop it, folks. You can't see, you know, the, this is the hardest of the hardcores there that weekend. And even though there are a lot of people being dragged to that show alongside their significant others or whatever... That crowd's going to know who Okada is, just period, point blank. And I think if you debuted him in a match, to me it would have to have impact. Him defeating a Gunther type I think would be a big deal, but we'll see. He's not even signed there yet, and uh, we'll see how this whole process goes and how long it actually takes to get there. And, yes, he still has three more. Man, can you, ima- can you imagine – Ace President Tanahashi shooting on Okada, ruining his last couple of days there. It won't happen, but I know there are some New Japan fans that kind of wish that it would. Everyone's asking me about my Invisalign. It's off. What about it? I still have to wear a retainer. But man, eh? look at those chompers. I got to go pick up my new retainer today. Should I whiten them while I'm at it? Yeah, go ahead and do that. I can actually do that with the uh, teeth I have in right now. I just don't think anybody wants to see that. You can take your teeth out now? Good. That's weird. It's been a hard life, brother. Hey, listen. In about an hour, Lance Storm is going to be on the show here today. And uh, he's got a lot to talk about. And I think he wants to talk a lot about old Vince. So, uh, yeah. I may just sit back. But that's going to be 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern today. WrestlingObserver.com as well as Video.F4WOnline.com. Back later on tonight for subscribers with Dave. We'll talk all of the news, Dynamite, NXT, and more. And uh, that's it. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.